HCL tech numbers, uh, quite clearly that will be the stock that we will have to watch out for uh, 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 this morning. Uh, that's the first number that's hitting. Let's uh, wait and see whether uh, uh, this company surprises on other parameters as well. Uh, uh, we are just waiting. Okay, the rupee revenue is also coming in much better at 9,200. Uh, that's a 300 crore uh, uh, upside over what the markets were expecting, dollar revenue doing marginally better, largely in line you would say 1477 was what the street was expecting. But uh, let's uh, get uh, Reema Tendulkar in if she's mic'd up. Uh, Reema, the numbers are better than you thought? Well, yes indeed, these are looking like a very good set of earnings, particularly on the dollar revenue front where the company has delivered 1491. This is a handsome beat compared to uh, the $1,477 million that we were expecting. It's a quarter and quarter growth of close to about 4%. And this would put ACL technology on top of the sector league tables. So overall, this is going to go down as a very good set of earnings. In constant currency terms, the company has delivered a 6.2% uh, growth on a sequential basis. And this would be the highest growth that ACL technology has reported in constant currency terms, at least for the last six or seven seven quarters as far as I remember. So uh, the big beat is actually coming on the top line front and that should assuage some investor concerns because remember in the previous quarter the company fell short of street expectations and the stock had fallen 15% in a matter of two days and you know the fear in the street was is the momentum slowing down in HCL technology but with the top line growth that the company has delivered this quarter it should um, you know, subside all the investor fears, still awaiting what, um, you know, the margin performance is. So I'll get that in just a bit. But um, the figures that I have right now with me, a dollar revenue growth of 4%, much better than what the peers have reported. Just to remind you, uh, Infosys was at 0.8%, a TCS was flat, whereas Wipro was at 1.35%. So Wipro is clearly much ahead of its uh, peers, and even in constant currency terms, at 6.2%. Um, still, do you guys have the margin? Yeah, right? yeah, Rima, it's coming at 23.8. Okay, so 23.8 is also um, higher than what the street was anticipating. The street was expecting a bit of a decline in the margins on the back of a staggered impact of the wage hike. It took place in the previous quarter and part of it this quarter. So we thought that the margins would come down a tad bit, but uh, the company, true to its form over the last few quarters, has consistently maintained margins around the 24% mark. So even on the margins, uh, the company has beat street expectations, but the focus is more on the top line. The net income, too, at 191 five uh, crores is a growth of 2.2 percent that the company has delivered and that too is higher than street expectations so all the key parameters are looking um, you know pretty healthy in fact the constant currency growth the company just alerts me is the highest that we've seen in the last 16 uh, quarters and to add um, the, you know the cherry on the top the board has also recommended a bonus issue in the ratio of one is to one this okay. is with the objective to encourage participation of small investors but this was unexpected lines because the company a few days back had intimated that along with the earnings they will be considering a bonus issue but um, this is looking like a great set of earnings expect the stock uh, you know with some fireworks even for HCL technology along with the markets like that okay do you would you say that uh, HCL tech has done even better than the peers I mean after all we got a subdued set of numbers from TCS Yes, it's miles ahead of its peers. So just to once again tell you, a dollar revenue growth of HCL technology at 4%. The second one is a Wipro at 1.35%, whereas an Infosys was sub 1% and TCS was flat. So that gives you an idea. And you know what's interesting this time, um, you know, Lata, is uh, the narrowing of the growth divergence between uh, peers. If you remember in the previous quarter, a TCS's uh, constant currency growth was at 7.7%, um, and the lowest was a Wipro at 3%, which means the difference between the highest and the lowest growth company in the top four mm. was about you know four and a half percent. But this quarter, it's um, you know actually on the lower side. So you have seen some you know narrowing of the growth divergence between the top four. Um, you know, companies. Mm -hmm. And the other point that, you know, we should highlight is the impact and the magnitude of cross-currency, which has impacted all the IT companies. It's been in the tune of about 200 to 250 basis points for each of the companies. And, you know, we keep saying that, look, let's look at the constant currency because of the, you know, impact of, um, you know, the other currency, you know, the impact of the currency movement. But it's quite likely that cross-currency is going to impact all the companies, even in this quarter, because of the dollar strength as well as, you know, the euro depreciation because of the ECB moves. 
So, you know, cross-currency is going to be a factor which we'll have to live with perhaps even in this quarter. So uh, these are the two trends that I, you know, noticed that it's a comeback quarter for uh, laggards like Wipro. HCL technology, which has slowed down over the last two quarters, has made a big comeback. And, you know, companies with a higher base, something like a TCS, has showed you some slowdown in the momentum. But overall, HCL technology, it's a big thumbs up. And it seems like a fairly broad-based performance because America has done very well, a growth of 6%. Europe is grown at 7.2% on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Infrastructure management services, which for the last two quarters were showing you just a meager growth of about 3 to 4% on a sequential basis, has bounced back. This is the mainstay uh, you know, of growth for the company. Infrastructure has gone up by 6.2%. With respect to individual verticals, it's um, life sciences and healthcare, which is filing with a 20% growth on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. But vertical-wise, it's largely broad-based. Uh, only financials has grown lower than the company average. Other than that, it's um, America, Europe, which is doing very well. Infrastructure has bounced back. Engineering, uh, you know, which the company told us is at an inflection point in the previous quarter and could turn out to be the next bet for HCL technology, has gone up we by 12.5% QOQ. Reema, there are a few <laughs> more things that uh, have been been announced. HCL Technology says gross employee additions is 11,734 and net employee additions is 4,718. More important, I think there is a statement on attrition. Uh, it says the December quarter attrition in IT services was 16.4 percent. It added 700 million dollar clients. Uh, anything that uh, is impressive in this? Well, one, uh, the employee addition looks quite good because in the previous quarter, the net employee additions was at 3,000. This time you said it's more than 4,000. Yes. So that's a positive. Other than that, uh, attrition, you said, is at 16.4%, yes. which means that too has moderated. Um, you know, compared to the last two or three quarters, one in, in two quarters back, it was at 16.9. It came down to 16.6, and they've managed to lower it further to 16.4. So that also looks like a big positive. Um, it's another quarter where the company has won $1 billion of deal wins. This would mark the eighth consecutive quarter of, um, you know, $1 billion of deal wins. So it's consistently showing you momentum on deal wins. And 15 transformation engagements is similar to what they saw in the previous quarter. So even the other, you know, internals are looking quite healthy for HCL technology. Sonia? No, Lata, you pretty much summed it up. So, uh, very good set of numbers. But Reema, I just wanted to ask you one question on valuations. I know in a market like this, it doesn't really matter much. But uh, between or among the uh, top tier, the ones like TCS uh, and Infosys and HCL Tech, how are the valuations stacked up now? Well, valuations for ACL technology are historically lower than its peers, and it still is because ACL technology is not, the stock has now outperformed something like an Infosys in the last 15 months or so, you know, at least one year or so. So ACL technology perhaps would be trading at sometimes, say, 15 times, you know, next year earnings. So this would be lower compared to a TCS, and a TCS which would be at closer to maybe at 20 times, whereas an Infosys would be at an 18 times. So uh, valuation-wise, historically, ACL has always traded at a, you know, at a discount to its larger peers like TCS as well as Infosys, and it's purely because of the size. You know, it's, uh, TCS and Infosys are behemoths compared to HCL technology. So I think the street would like to see, uh, you know, HCL technology show you these growth rates on a larger base, you know, as it continues to gain scale. So valuations for HCL technology are not expensive, and this will be a factor in favor of, uh, you know, when the stock opens up for trade today. So uh, this growth is better than its peers. It seems fairly a broad-based performance. Uh, the company has bounced back after lagging, uh, you know, momentum and showing you a sedate performance of the last few quarters, and valuations are inexpensive. And if you see the stock, uh, at least in the last one year or so, uh, the performance of something like an Infosys has actually been better than that of HCL technology. So, you know, most of the factors are falling in place for HCL technology to, you know, show in a good performance today. Okay, I completely agree with you on that. Uh, uh, you know, even when you look at blended utilization, 82.9, attrition, as you pointed out, is stabilizing. Uh, the number of clients they've added in each category, 100 million, 50 million plus, 40 million plus, are all better than what they did uh, last time. But let's get uh, a quick view from the street. Ankit Pandey, the equity research uh, uh, analyst uh, at Quant Broking, is joining in. Ankit, uh, how do the numbers look to you? They seem to have beaten on all parameters, at least vis-a-vis -vis our polls. Yes, I think numbers uh, are well ahead of expectations. We were expecting a constant currency growth of close to 3.5%, but they delivered uh, 
well in excess of 5 percent it seems to me uh, at least 4 percent in reported terms compared to our 1 percent in reported term growth so that and that's a significant pickup and and well they had hinted at some ramp up in growth last quarter we did ask them on the interest sector side um, last quarter the growth was uh, 3.2% uh, uh, 3.6% in constant currency the interest sector side and we specifically asked whether whether the growth would pick up and he for the first time i think uh, uh, said in unqualified uh, terms that it would so mm. i think this this is uh, still ahead of expectations i think the growth is well ahead of expectations so margins are in line so how much are okay. how much may you upgrade the price i think price wise i wouldn't move too much at this point in time um, um, this is a year in which the constant currency growth will be in line but the reported growth would still be a little bit lower having said that i think we can still manage about 12% growth uh, which will be uh, i think uh, pretty much in line with our expectations so i don't think we will move uh, that much in target price uh, um, if not as high 16 at this point in time i think uh, there is some upside to the stock i think the stock is trading at 13 times one year forward and we would have uh, i'm sorry 14 times one year forward and we would trade it at 15 times one year forward so there is a bit of 15% upside in the stock and that's why we stand this point in Mm. Ankit, hi. Morning. So, 14 times one year forward is uh, still a discount to what many of the larger peers like TCS are trading at. Uh, do you think this gap between HCL Tech and TCS will narrow going ahead? And what are your EPS estimates now? Um, I think uh, at this point in time, yes, HCL Tech is trading at a bit of a discount. Uh, bear in mind that uh, maybe we'd like to compare with Vipro a little bit more closely. TCS is. is a much larger entity it has to look far more consistently and operates in a, on an, op, an operating margin at a, at a different band altogether uh, we would uh, we would assume that uh, if the eps estimates uh, or or if our growth estimates don't change so much uh, keeping in mind the management commentary as keep third or much of you know, much of the commentary from them but if our um, eps estimates don't change we can actually have uh, an estimate of 125 rupees in fy 16 we have a multiple of uh, 15 times so we have a target price of close to 1880 rupees at this point okay uh, and from uh, what would your pecking order be now from the top tier names i think uh, it still continues to be uh, tcs uh, hcl tech uh, at this point in time at the top uh, infosys could be poised for a re-rating if they uh, flash a double digit Uh, guidance um, uh, in growth terms for uh, next year so that could be a turning point otherwise we see a steady 10 12% upside to that and the pro comes in last over there okay hi ankit uh, this is reema here one of the concerns for hcl technology was that you know the performance is not broad based it's largely infrastructure management services which does well while the core software services lags behind but this quarter the application business has gone up by 3.8% on a quarter on quarter basis considering that infrastructure as well as the application side is showing you a pick up in growth is that not a case for um, you know you to add some brownie points to hcl technology this quarter I think uh, we had been expecting pick up in the software on the software side infrastructure side had lulled a little bit and I'm still seeing uh, to see the growth on the infrastructure side this quarter but uh, clearly the last quarter as well uh, is, is software I'm referring to the 66% of the company um, that grew a good uh, 3.2% in constant currency last quarter as well where um, engineering services and are in the those things were in the showing pick up um, they had a couple of large ramp ups come on board last quarter uh, from the wins in the previous times here so that i think is continuing and is helping uh, overall traction as well uh, in, in in times when interest growth is moderating a little bit but at the same time we have to keep in mind that uh, infrastructure services it is uh, the bread and butter of excel tech that's what they known for in the market and i think uh, we should still look out a little bit for the growth i think infrastructure and constant currency this time is 6.2% so that's that's a significant pick up and that's what we're looking for in this quarter but not to this extent so it is out out performed from our expectations yes All right, uh, Ankit. Uh, thank you very much for joining us with your first take on HCL Technologies. Uh, we just okay. Uh, any disclosures? Um, well, uh, we do have um, uh, a trading desk of our own, so 
we do whole stocks and we obviously uh, recommend our clients. Uh, but all our uh, recommendations are in line with what uh, we recommend uh, on the public television. Yes. Um, and um, of course, uh, Quant uh, has a, a large trading desk of its own, so we do have uh, certain stocks that uh, are common to the uh, trading book as well. Point taken. Thank you very much, Ankit Pandey, for all those uh, details. Uh